Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anne and today I'm going to give you my spoiler-free review of The Sun is Also a Star, both the book and the film. So, before diving into my review, let's first start with a short summary of the story. The Sun is Also a Star is a 2016 contemporary young adult novel written by Nicola Yoon and it follows our main protagonists Natasha Kingsley and Daniel Bay. The premise of the story is that these two are going to meet and fall in love in a day and the problem is that Natasha and her family are illegal immigrants and that they are being deported that very same day. So whether they fall in love or not there is no way um, Natasha and Daniel can have a future together. For Natasha the day is all about trying to find a way for her and her family to be able to stay in America. For Daniel it's about acing his um, college admission interview at Yale. Even though he doesn't want to go there, it's his Korean parents who want him to go to college and to become a doctor. He wants to be a poet. Natasha and Daniel's day takes on a whole new meaning and dim dimension when they meet each other and Daniel uh, thinks it's their fate to fall in love with each other. He's the romantic one who believes in fate and destiny and she is the skeptic one who um, believes in science and facts and doesn't even believe that love exists in the first place. They spend the day together in New York and that's basically the story. So I've known about this book for quite some time now because it's been around in the bookish community uh, a lot. It's a very popular book I'd say but uh, based on the premise of the story I was never really interested in picking it up. That is until I saw the trailer for the film um, which really intrigued me so I figured I'd first read the book and then see the film. Now let's get into my review. First let's talk about the book. I love a good contemporary young adult novel but unfortunately this one was a bit underwhelming for me. I ended up giving it 3 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed reading the book but I just wasn't really into the romance which is kind of the main component of the plot. It was all just a bit too much instant love for me. You know um, when two characters meet and they fall in love instantly or within a couple of hours. I'm just not really into that. I'm more of a slow burn kind of gal or an instant chemistry but falling in love much later on kind of girl. Of course I knew beforehand what this book was going to be about so that should have warned me I guess but I have seen quite a few reviews around um, in which people said they usually aren't fans of Insta Love but they didn't mind in this book they thought it was very well done so I figured maybe that would be the case for me as well but unfortunately not. Daniel's instant devotion to Natasha and his belief that it is their destiny to end up together to fall in love made me a little bit uncomfortable. I just couldn't really connect with that. I mean, how do you see a person and just know that that person is the one you're meant to be with? I know there are people who have whirlwind romances like that and end up spending the rest of their lives together, but that's just not me. I get instant attraction, but I don't get instant devotion. And for me, it wasn't made believable in this story either. What I did really like in this novel were the aspects that didn't have much to do with the romance. For example, Natasha's relationship with her father and the whole immigration and uh, illegal immigrant aspect of the story that was interesting to me uh, to learn more about. And then there's Daniel's struggles with being first generation Korean American and the, str and the pressure that brings with it. He loves his parents, but he hates the fact that they want him to become a doctor and they can't see that that won't make him happy or even they do see that it won't make him happy but they don't really care about that or they believe that in the end it is what is best for him even though he might be miserable and racism is also addressed in this book for example when Daniel and Natasha walk down the street hand in hand and people are um, staring at them because there's this mixed race couple, I guess. And then there are also the scenes in Daniel's family's um, black hair care store. There's even a whole chapter in the book about African-American hair and the history behind that. And I thought that was really cool. I really liked 
learning more about that and about the culture that's behind all of it. And then there are some chapters throughout the book that are told from the perspective of complete strangers or people Natasha and Daniel meet throughout the day. For example, a waitress in a restaurant and um, the immigration lawyer. If you're hearing strange noises right now, it's because my guinea pigs are right here and they are sort of fighting, perhaps playing, who can tell. Anyway, those chapters um, were really fun for me. They added an, another layer to the story, which I really appreciated. Nevertheless, the main part of this book is about the romance, and that just didn't really do it for me, unfortunately. I did think after finishing the book um, that the story is very well suited for the big screen, so um, I was really looking forward to seeing the film. In fact, based on the trailer I'd seen and the story, I actually thought I would like the film better than I liked the book. Unfortunately, that wasn't really the case either. In the film, um, Natasha and Daniel are played by Yara Shahidi and Charles Melton and when I saw the trailer I was actually a little bit confused because I was under the impression that this book was about two high school students and the actors seemed more like they were in college. So I was a bit apprehensive about that but that actually didn't really bother me. What did bother me was that again I just didn't really buy the romance and this time I think that mostly had to do with chemistry. I don't think there wasn't any chemistry between Yara Shahidi and Charles Melton, but I didn't think there was enough. When the premise of your story is that two characters are going to fall in love within a day, they need to have a whole lot of chemistry. In fact, Daniel at one point in the book and the film says that he believes that he and um, Natasha have the X factor. And I just didn't really see that in the film. It wasn't that convincing to me. That might also have had to do with the writing though. There were fun bits in the dialogue and there were good bits, but overall I think it was stunted and natural and a little bit forced. Natasha's lines especially really pulled me out of the story at times and I still haven't figured out whether that is because um, her lines just weren't that good or because I don't really like Yara Shahidi as an actor or thought she wasn't really acting that well. I think it might have been a combination of both. There were good bits, but I think the way she interacted with Daniel seemed a little bit fake and unnatural. And the reason why I think it might also have been Yara Shahidi's acting is because um, I liked Charles Melton better. I thought he was more natural. Overall though, the forced and sometimes artificial dialogue meant that I never really got into the film and beforehand I thought this might be the kind of film I could really sink into, you know. I love a good romantic film, um, one you can really immerse yourself into and I had hoped that The Sun is Also a Star would be like that for me, but that wasn't the case. There were even a few moments that actually made me go... The first of those moments is in the beginning of the film. Um, when Natasha and Daniel haven't even met yet and I am going to t be talking about uh, the difference between the film and the book here. So if you haven't seen the film yet and you want to be surprised about what's different then you might want to stop watching here. Of course I'm not going to spoil anything story-wise. Anyway, Natasha has a meeting with an immigration person who she hopes will be able to help her and her family stay in the United States um, but he basically tells her that he can't help her, that they have to leave um, and that she shouldn't worry because Jamaica is great, um, it's a nice country, he and his wife went there and on vacation and everything is iry there. And here he appropriates the Jamaican word iry which basically means alright I believe and is pretty offensive in the way he does it. And Natasha is not having it, at least in the book she was not having it. In the book she goes off on this amazing rant about this man not knowing what he's talking about that he and his wife probably never left the resort they went to on vacation because they were worried about safety and about um, seeing or being confronted with poverty. And the man confirms that they indeed didn't leave the resort. And Natasha really puts this man in his place here and I thought that was so cool. Uh, she stands up to this person in power um, in such a powerful way and that was just cut out of the film. Um, when that scene began I was excited about seeing that rant and seeing um, how she was going to do that, but in the film she still stands up 
and uh, she's still emotional but all she says is uh, please help me stay I've lived here for nine years this is my home I need to go to college here I don't want to leave and then he says okay maybe I'll be able to help you and that's just not as powerful and I was really bummed out when I saw they had taken that out of the story and that kind of set the tone for the film for me. Another thing that doesn't really make it into the film is the diversity. I mean sure you have two characters um, who are people of color and I think that's really cool that we got a film with, uh, with two people of color um, in the lead roles but a lot of the diversity and the discussion on race and uh, immigration and deportation that was in the book was kind of faded out I guess in the film it was there but it wasn't really that present and I thought that was a pity because I thought that was one of the strongest parts of the book instead there were a lot of kissing montages and aerial views of the city of New York with to me nondescript hip music in the background and Natasha's struggles with her father which are a very prominent part of the book are completely left out as well um, and I thought that was a pity as well. I know you can't include everything from a book in an adaptation because it would just be too long and too dense but there were some key elements I really liked in the book that I thought were missing here and should have been in there. So yeah unfortunately I wasn't a big fan of the film. I had hoped um, the story um, of instant love would come across better on the big screen than it did in the book but that wasn't the case. I think that's partly also due to the fact that you don't really get the inner monologues um, Natasha and Daniel have going on uh, in the book because yeah that's not really possible in film um, and I'm, perhaps I should have seen that coming beforehand but I didn't. But I would love to know what you think of The Sun is Also a Star. Have you read the book? Have you seen the film? What, what are your thoughts? Please let me know down in the comments and we can chat about it. Um, thanks for watching. If you like this video Please give it a like and su subscribe to my channel if you want to, I would love it if you do that. Until next time, bye!